So here are some simple corrections Curtis here can make on his one-handed backhand to make it super consistent. Now, this video is courtesy of The Hendy on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to their awesome channel. I've put their link in the description below. Now, let's watch it three times in a row, and then we'll analyze it. Uh, we've all been there, Curtis, so don't <laughs> don't worry too much. The, we can absolutely help you with your one-handed backhand. I'm going to be using some pros here on the left to compare your swing. Uh, so this video is actually courtesy of 12KGP Tennis on YouTube, so make sure you subscri subscribe to their awesome channel. I will have all the links in the description below so you can watch these great videos. All right, here's the first thing, Curtis. You take your racket back low initially, and then you lift it. So check this out. The first thing you do is you take your racket back and your hand, your hitting hand, is quite low. And you can, we can see that. We can see like where it emerges from in front of you. And once you begin the take back low, then you lift the racket high. So your racket is low initially, then lifts up. Let's check out Lorenzo Musetti. Watch what he does. He goes up and then takes his racket back. See that? See the difference? Instead of going back low, then lifting, I want you to think of going up, then back. Now, it isn't up by itself. You can see he's not just going straight up in front of him in the ready position. He is rotating the body and beginning the unit turn with the racket while he's doing that. But what you're doing is actually leading to you being late in certain situations. So I want the first thing you do when you're in the ready position is to begin like you're moving up diagonally as you see with Musetti. He's not going just back low and then having to go up. He's not going solely up and then going straight back. It's at an angle up as he begins the take back. It means you're going to be able to handle pace and you're not going to be late. The second thing, and this is huge, Curtis. I want you to look at this backhand right here, and you can see his rackets up and then back. I want you to look at his take back, and I want you to compare it to yours. Look at the difference. His strings are facing directly off to the left. You could take a coin and balance it on the top of his racket. His elbow, left elbow, and his hand and his shoulder, his left shoulder, we just can't see it, are all relatively the same height. And when we look at your racket, your strings are facing directly to the sky with your hitting hand very, very high and your left hand almost straight above your left elbow. The fact that Musetti has his strings facing directly off the left, and you can actually talk me into the fact that that coin, if it were to fall off, it would actually fall off this way because it looks like his racket is a few degrees closed compared to the court, where if we try to put a coin on your racket, obviously it would fall back because your strings are facing the sky. This right here with Musetti is the picture of consistency. What you're doing here, there's a lot of calcul there are a lot of calculations and corrections basically that you've got to make later on in the swing with your take back like this. So what I want you to copy from Musetti is I want you immediately upon seeing the ball coming to your backhand is feel like the first move is up. Feel like the first move is up, then the take back occurs. It isn't exactly what you're going to do because you're going to be turning your body as you do it, but do not turn low and then lift. Don't turn low and then lift. It makes you actually use the bounce to let you know when to lift the racket. You can see that. You wait for the ball, you wait for the ball, the ball bounces, and then you lift the racket. The bounce cannot mean anything to you. And if you just, which it does currently, because it kind of tells you when to lift the racket to begin. Problem is what happens if the ball's late. So what you want to do is make sure you basically ignore the bounce. Forget about the bounce, because the bounce means nothing. All we want to do is lift the racket up immediately from the ready position. And when you turn, you've got to have your hitting hand lower, which you can see yours is super high. His hitting hand is kind of at the bottom of his ribs, where your hitting hand is up by your neck. So it's a, it's a 
big difference what's going on. I wish I could reach through the screen and raise your left elbow, lower your left hand a bit. I'm sorry, your left hand, really lower your right hand. And then what happens is the racket's going to be vertical like this with your left arm here. We want the racket vertical with your left arm like that. That's the look that you've got to have. Learn this and instantly your consistency is going to go way up. Now, you'll probably notice that I'm going to be using different videos to explain things. And one reason is because oftentimes in order to get an ideal swing, you have to kind of Frankenstein it all together just because nobody on tour has this absolutely perfect technique that you would want to copy. So you kind of want to pick and choose the foundational and basic ideas from different players. And then that can kind of become the way you learn the swing. And then as you go along, you can learn your idiosyncrasies and your style and your, your signature, if you will, of your technique. But here I'm going to show you Dominic Team on the left. This is also from 12 KGP Tennis on YouTube. And I want you to understand a concept, Curtis, that the one-handed backhand is more two-handed than it is one-handed. And Team is a perfect example of this. I want you to look at this backhand right here. I want you to notice that he takes the racket back with a unit turn, turning the body. He takes the racket back with two hands. Then he drops the racket with two hands, left hand on the throat. And then look how his left hand actually goes forward and then lets go. In his mind, it probably feels like he almost still had his left hand on the racket at contact. This is what I call hitting a one and a half hander right? Hit a one and a half hander, not a one hander, not a two hander, almost feel like half of your left hand is still on the racket. You make a very common technical mistake when the racket is dropping. And it is you let go really early, super common in recreational players, that the left hand comes off super early because the brain hitting a one hander thinks, well, it's one handed. If we go to the next backhand, you'll see Again, his left hand, he's got his index finger, his left index finger touching the strings right there. And he drops the racket with both hands. He goes toward the ball and then finally he lets go. There was such a long period of time. It went back with two hands. It dropped with two hands and it approached the ball with two hands. And then finally he lets go just before contact. I want you to look at the direction his left hand is going from this point, and I want you to compare it to yours. So if we look at this position right here, this is that moment where the buck cap is about to point to the ball. I want you to look how his left hand is going toward the ball. Watch. See how his left hand goes forward toward the ball? I want you to look where your left hand goes. It's trying to go backward. The left hand, Curtis, shouldn't begin going back for backward too early because what ends up happening is you will get overpowered or your left arm will get overpowered by the right arm and then you can't stay sideways. What you want to do is think of bringing your left hand in front of your belt buckle at contact. His left hand is in front of his belt buckle. Then it goes back and you can see now his hand goes back like this. You wanna think of, the, of taking the left hand to contact and then as you hit, that's when the left hand goes backward. Here's a great view of Shapovalov. Now this video is courtesy of Court Level Tennis on YouTube, so make sure you subscribe to their awesome channel. I want you to look at his left hand. Now, uh, yeah, yes, he's Shapovalov, by the way. Notice Melbourne is written backward. Uh, I just reversed the video to make him right-handed. And I want you to look at his left hand. Watch his left hand go toward the ball to contact. Again, yours is trying to go backward while your racket's going to contact. Now, Shapo is going to swing up with his racket here, and his left hand's going to go like this. Watch. that After contact, that's when the left hand should go back. You're trying to go back too early, which means from contact, your left hand goes this way. Your left hand spins around. After contact, 
his left hand does what your left hand did before contact. Your, his left hand after contact goes backward. So all we need to do is copy that idea of team is feel like your left hand is staying on so long that you accidentally almost keep it on during contact. Feel like you let go as late as possible, Curtis. Then you can start to move your arms apart. Now, here is the fourth idea. First idea was the way you take the racket back. Second is having the racket vertical. Third is both hands. Number four, I want you to work on closing the racket face, Curtis. I want you to look at your racket prior to hitting this ball. And I want you to compare it to Shapo. Shapo's racket is closed. It's closed at about 45 degrees. Your racket is ever so slightly open at this point. What this means is that Shapo can swing up and have a ton of consistency with while hitting topspin. With your swing, because your racket is slightly open, you probably feel the need to roll the racket over to gain consistency as you hit the ball. And if you don't roll it in time, this is what happens. The ball goes out. Now, rolling the racket over the ball is impossible, but that's the feeling that many players have when they're hitting. And if they do it too early, they roll the ball into the net. If they roll too late, the ball goes out. And every once in a while, you'll hit this amazing backhand. You're like, oh my gosh, why can't I do that every time? It's because your racket's not closing. Now, one of the benefits, Curtis, of having your left hand on the racket longer is you can use that hand to help you close the racket face, right? It's one of the benefits. But a closed racket face, which in my opinion is a top four tennis tip of all time, right? Thank you, Vic Braden. When you close the racket face prior to hitting the ball, it allows you to swing inside out, away from your body, and swing up, and you get a ton of consistency. You slap at the ball, putting side spin. The ball's got side spin as it goes over the net, which means gravity's not strong enough, obviously, and the ball is going to go out. So work on closing the racket face prior to hitting, and you'll be able to swing up with consistency. Now, here's the last thing. I want you to look, Curtis, at Shapo's finish. Notice his hitting hand is higher than his head, and his racket is to the left of his hand. He's actually got what's called the left side of the letter V. If I draw his racket, I can then draw a letter V. He's got the left side of the letter V. This is important because he has no wrist movement in this backhand whatsoever. So the angle here is the angle there. It's the same, ooh, let me get a tool, here we go. It's the same angle. There's no wrist. Now, does he always do this? No, but does he do this to help him gain control? Absolutely. Now, what's interesting is on the previous backhand that you hit in this point, you actually do this. You're in trouble, and I want you to look how your racket isn't as open. It's not facing the sky. It's only open a little bit. And I want you to notice how after you're done, you keep the racket to the left of your hand. That's the left side of the letter V. It's a little wider than a V, but that's great. So you know to do this when you're in trouble because you're an athlete. You're a, you're a good, you're a good athlete. I want you to do this all the time because we're not quite the athlete that, that Shapovalov is. So when he's done on this backhand, he is keeping the racket to the left of his hand. It is such a great way to gain control. This is an on the rise ball. So he's trying to gain maximum control. And the pros will, all pros use this backhand finish. I would say like 20% of the time, right? But, but we want to kind of do that all the time because we're always trying to gain a ton of control because we're not world-class athletes. So all I want you to do is I want you to work on keeping the racket to the left of your hand. You're already doing it here on the previous backhand, which by the way, you don't miss. <laughs> um, and even though it was a more difficult ball, and then this is an easier ball that lands short, and then you use a swing that just doesn't work. So work on these ideas. I am super excited to see the improvement that you'll make. Now, the best way to practice these techniques is at home with a Topspin Pro. You can get a Topspin Pro using my link in the description. I'm also going to pin it in the first comment. I absolutely love the Topspin Pro, and I know you will too. And if you're looking for people in your local area to play matches against or practice with, maybe you want to find a coach who's close to you who can help you with your game, then use my link for Play Your Court. And it's playyourcourt.com slash two-minute tennis. When you use my link to sign up, you get 50% off. So work on these one-handed backhand tips, and there's no doubt. 
You're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. Curtis, you got this.